I work at the California Civil Rights Department, and at the Civil Rights Department, our mission is to protect Californians from unlawful discrimination in employment, housing, public accommodations, which is another word for businesses, as well as from human trafficking and hate crimes. We take this mission quite seriously, and, and, and in fact, our name recently changed to the California Civil Rights Department from the Department of Fair Employment and Housing, in part to reflect the fact that we have this broad jurisdiction to protect all Californians from discrimination. We do feel fortunate because here in California, at least people you know, the powers that be listen to us and there is a comprehensive strategy right. to combat hate. Can you take us through that? We are, I think, one of the most advanced in terms of thinking about hate in a more comprehensive and, and responding to hate in a more all-encompassing way. And when, what I mean by that is recognizing hate does not happen in a vacuum. Um, Filipinos have confronted hate in the United States for generations. So part of what we want to do is say, we understand hate is not isolated, it is not new, and in fact, if we are going to address hate crimes, we have to address issues like discrimination in housing, in employment, in schools. All of those issues contribute to a climate of hate. So that's one of the ways that we address this in a more comprehensive uh, and sort of more holistic manner. The other thing that we do is we say, if you are targeted for hate, whether it's a crime or an incident, you deserve support. And in California, we are doing that by investing in social services, really thinking about how do we respond to this in a way that respects the fact that when someone is targeted, it is not just that individual. An entire community is targeted. So our obligation in California is to make sure we are responsive to the needs of the individual, their family, but also the entire community that's being terrorized by this. Ralph Act. Yes. What is it in relation to hate crimes? It was a law passed by um, an African American member of the legislature who recognized that people who are targeted for hate may want to bring civil claims. And when I talk about civil claims, I mean claims that don't result in someone going to jail, but do result in potentially getting damages. Mm -hmm getting something called injunctive relief, which could be like a protective order. So in California, if you are targeted for hate, even if we can't prove a hate crime, you still may be eligible to bring charges under the Ralph Act. Mm -hmm. And people come to us and we can help them determine whether or not they can bring a Ralph Act claim. And if that's the case, they may be able to get some kind of damages and support. And now we have that, we need to use it. We That's need, right. We need to take advantage of it, right? Typically, you know, Asians, they say that we don't want to rock the boat, we want to be quiet, put your head down. There may be something that offends us, maybe doesn't sit right with us, but we don't say anything. So how are you responding to that community? Because I also want to remind our viewers, you guys won't know what's happening out there if we do not report. It is our job to earn that trust. I understand why people have not come forward in the past, and part of what we are trying to do is to demonstrate in California, we are quite serious about making sure that people who come forward will get the kind of support that they need. So what I would say to people who are concerned is there are many options for reporting. We have interviewed a lady whose story really comes to mind during this time. She was taking the metro, and she was walking, and she just got punched out of nowhere. She thinks that it's because she looks different, she's Asian, she's Filipina, but then that was it, just a punch, nothing was said, nothing. So then she reported to the police and apparently they said, it happens all the time, you should be lucky that you only got punched. It should not be up to her to determine whether or not she can prove you know, that, it's a, hate, that yeah. it's a hate crime. Part of what we are establishing here and we will be launching in the fall is the California versus hate uh, response line and network and that response line and network our goal is to make sure if someone you know if that happens to her she can call us she can email us and we will say first are you okay you know um, we're not an emergency line but we are, we'll connect you and then connect let you know what your options are even if they can't prove a crime sometimes you can prove something um, under California law where you can recover civil damages for being targeted for hate so we will talk about what those options are one of the things I feel we've made really clear about our work is that we want to be a resource not only to individuals targeted for hate, but to all the organizations that have been working many times for generations to serve the needs of people and say, you know, if, so if you go to your church and you tell someone that something happened and they say, can you help me, that we would be able to help that church identify how to resource and support that person. People should feel really proud of the fact that people who immigrated from 
many countries across the, uh, across the world who came to the United States said, this is, we are gonna stand up for what's right and for what's just. And that is actually the most, you know, that could be the most patriotic thing of all. Thank you. We'll end on that note. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you. Thank you.